The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. Now many saw them going and knew them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately people recognized him and ran about the whole neighborhood and began to bring sick people on their pallets to any place where they heard he was. And when wherever he came in villages, cities, or country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and besought him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here tonight, that we might hear your word and be touched by you, that we might reach out and and hear that word and have it come on fire in our hearts so that we can leave here strengthened after receiving a little bit of rest, strengthened for service to go out into the world and to share your good news. Now, Help us, Lord, to focus on that word and to focus on your will. And then by the power of your spirit, give us strength to do it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know if you know, but I'm a country girl. I grew up in the country. It was like 10 miles to any town, any direction. Okay, that's not really country, but it was for a city girl like me, that was country. And being an A-type personality, it was a little bit of a challenge for me because I tend to be someone who always has places to go, things to do, people to see. I was not one to sit still for very long, just ask my mother. If there wasn't something to do, I made it up, you know. I think I'll go climb a tree or or explore the woods or maybe I'll play one-man kickball. That wasn't a problem. I always won. Uh, You know, maybe I would take my dump truck, my Tonka dump truck, all the way to the hill and ride it down and crash into the swing set and take it up the hill again and do it all over again. I would get so excited when I would accidentally hear my mother say, well, I'm going to go grocery shopping. Oh, can I go? Can I? Can I? Yeah. And oh, lordy, lordy, those dreadful two-day-long weekends, you know, in school. I would ask with hopeful anticipation, are we going anywhere today? And the response was usually, yes. to da dum to da dum to da dum 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 We were country folk. We had to drive our garbage to the dump. So yes, we actually did get to go somewhere. Now, being an A-type personality and a product of my mother, I'm also a list maker. Mm-hmm. I love making to-do lists. I will actually put things on my to-do list that I've actually done just so I can put them on there and cross them off. <laughs> now that I'm a little older and wiser and, and more and more seems to be getting added to that list, I came to realize that I needed to rename my list for sanity's sake. And now I affectionately call it my list of good intentions. You see, even I was getting tired of disappointing myself of not accomplishing everything that was on my to-do list, so I Lutheranized it. To get rid of all that guilt that I was feeling about what I wasn't accomplishing, I now call that list my list of good intentions. No need to feel bad about what didn't get done. Now, I think I would have been a really interesting disciple in Jesus' day. 
Because he got these disciples. They've just returned from being out and about doing the kingdom work. And, and Jesus has met with them beforehand, before sending them out. And he had been teaching them and telling them what to do, what to pack, where to go. Now, realizing what I just shared about myself, can you picture where I'm going with this? All right, here we go. Jesus is teaching me. Packing list. Take nothing. Take nothing. Got it. All right. And then he's going to tell you, you know, where you go. Jesus said, teach, heal, uh, preach, uh, uh, rejected, nah, be Taylor Swift. Just shake it off, you know, and move on. Oh, slow down, Jesus. I'm making my list and I'm checking it twice. Jesus had sent the disciples out and now they're returning to report what had happened and, and what they did. I can imagine their excitement. They probably witnessed some really amazing things as they drove out demons and anointed and healed the sick and, and preached repentance. I suspect they were also rejected a, a time or two and perhaps even thought to themselves, well, that didn't go so well. And now they're back in the presence of Jesus and he says to them, Come away by yourself to a lonely place and rest a while. I know you've been working. I know you've been traveling. I know you've been serving. I also know the needs out there are endless and overwhelming. So, so come away. Rest a while. I don't think there's anyone in this room that can't relate to that, to, to come away and rest a while. Have you met any new parents lately? You think they need some rest? Any of you out there getting pulled 20 directions all at the same time? Is it just me or is the workday getting a little longer? Ask retired people. Anyone retired out there? I mean, they say they're busier than they've ever been. I mean, how hectic and crazy has our life become? Anyone else in this room need to come away and get some rest? Well, as Indiana Joan would say, You've chosen wisely. I mean, isn't that what we're doing here? Kind of resting up, if you will. Now, this isn't a sermon about balancing your life, you know, between the certain percentages of work and play and spiritual and, and physical. It isn't that I'm telling you, y'all just come in here, stop everything you're doing and, and uh, take a little nap. You're awake, right? Yeah, you are awake. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, a nap would be nice, but not quite yet. My point is, God never has us separate ourselves from him. He has us separate ourselves from the things that distract us from him. The crazy schedules and activities that we keep, all good stuff, I'm sure. NASCAR races are on, of course. But if anyone understands this, Jesus does. I mean, he went away to those lonely places. To do what? To pray, to fellowship with the Father, to be restored, to be strengthened for service for our sake, to fight off the devil and all of his empty promises, to prepare himself for that dark Good Friday so that one day we can all say he's risen. He is risen Thank you. You are awake. But until then, the harvest is great and the workers are few. Words out about Jesus. People are coming from all over, seeking him out. They're waiting for him in the villages and on the shoreline. No sooner does Jesus step foot on land and the people are pressing towards him. What's his response? Sorry, lunch break. Go, go check with my assistant. No, he has compassion on them. Jesus knew the work that was before him, and, and well, can we just say it was going to be endless? We read, he had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. Jesus saw the people. He heard them. He was concerned for them. They searched for healing, and there at the shoreline and into the villages and cities, the sick, the lame, the blind, the bleeding, the hopeless, the lost, they heard about him, and they believed in him and what he could do. And all they wanted to do was get near him because they believed if they just touched the fringe of his garment, they would be made well. And Jesus 
and his compassion heals them. It's interesting to consider why there is this suggestion of saying they are like sheep without a shepherd. But have you ever watched anyone in life struggle? Uh, Or what about those who don't even have the faith built into their hearts yet? You know, Uh, how do they do it? You ever you ever wonder how? I mean, doing it, doing life with the faith can be hard and challenging at times, can it not? How in the world do they do it without the faith? But like Jeremiah text describes today, there's a lot of false prophets out there, false shepherds who are going to lead people astray. There are kingdoms and rulers, ones that the devil will disguise and make them look really good, only to discover later it's not so good. Scripture will tell us what it looks like without a shepherd. They become scattered. They make up their own rules. They wander off. They get in harm's way. Squirrel point, you know. Uh, They do things like create golden calves. I mean, really, Moses was not gone that long. And as you know, Israel will fall under that kind of reign. But God, in his mercy and compassion on his people, they will repent. And he who is merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, will save them and redeem them. That 23rd Psalm today describes what life looks like with a shepherd, with a good shepherd, what it looks like to be led by someone who loves and cares for the flock. That is what God does for us. It was only a little while ago we we just confessed our sins. We've been enticed, uh, kind of led astray, if you will. And in his mercy and compassion, not only does God forgive us, he forgives us, but he forgets what we just confessed to him. God's compassion and love is so deep for us, he will leave the 99 to search out the one. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, there are a lot of lost sheep out there. People without a shepherd. I mean, seriously, just turn the news on. It doesn't take long to see how lost people really are. Seeking purpose and meaning in life. Questioning if there's even hope in life. We all know individually people in our lives who have turned from the faith or who just flat out refuse to listen about the faith. We know children and and young ones who aren't even being taught about God's mighty acts or his compassion and love and his sacrifice. That's why it's good we get to do a VBS. 55 kids got to hear that message this week. That's 20 hours of holy time with them. That's why in about seven days we will be doing confirmation camp with Nearly 50, Lord have mercy, nearly 50 teenagers for a whole week, 24-7, learning about God's will for their lives and learning what it means to serve as Christ has served them. That is 168 hours of holy time with those kids. In God's divine plan, knowing Jesus could not be at all places, at all times, he declares, I am preparing the way. A way for the nations to declare my praises and to proclaim the coming kingdom, and it's going to take all of you. But don't you worry, because that power from on high is going to come, and you will be my witnesses. As the Father has sent me, Jesus says, now I send you. And he, like a good shepherd, will lead you and guide you, instruct you and protect you. You will now teach and preach. Not just me, but you also. You will anoint and heal the sick. You will baptize in my name, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. You will share my compassion and serve one another to the ends of the earth. Oofta, that sounds pretty daunting, doesn't it? 
Well, thanks be to God for this little rest stop we have right here, right? A coming away to get some rest so that we too might be strengthened for service. And like those who gathered on the shoreline to just touch the fringe of Jesus' garment, we gather here today to be touched by him. And we are. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. I abide in you and will not let you go. This ministry of compassion has no boundaries except the boundaries we would create ourselves. And as we leave here, we know there's a lot of lost sheep. Sheep without a shepherd. We know the needs out there are endless. Oh, but that also means there's lots of opportunities. Yeah, we should put that on the pink insert. There are lots of opportunities for God to use each of us. Opportunities for us to be the light in the midst of darkness. A herder, if you will. Go out in that country and be a herder of sheep for the good shepherd. So with that in mind, what's on your list of good intentions this week? Study the scripture, pray a little more, go in peace to serve the Lord, to be more attentive to the needs around you, to be more aware of the wandering sheep walking by you. Hmm. There are needs everywhere. And that includes, it might be to your right or to your left, in front of you or in back of you. There are always needs, and God invites us to help him fulfill those. And I pray that wherever you go and whatever you do, that you have been blessed and fed by this little rest stop, a coming away to a lonely place to get some rest. So that as you leave here, that mm, maybe your ears are open to hear, your eyes are open to see, your heart is open to care, and your faith is strong enough to share. I pray that for you and for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a few moments to meditate on the word and will of God.